Hey, everybody, welcome back. We're currently witnessing one of the best rookie classes that the Chiefs have had in the last decade, at least. And it's not just on, you know, the offensive side. It's the, mostly on the defensive side. This video was originally going to be about Legereus Sneed and what he's brought to the team, what he's going to continue to bring to this team going forward. But while I'm watching these last two games against the Broncos and the Miami Dolphins, Tershawn Morton and Mike Dana have flashed so much in these just these last two games that we're seeing some development from a fifth round pick and an undrafted free agent that we never expected. So I had to alter some plans a little bit. So this is going to be more of a, a tribute to these three rookies who have actually shined coming in and playing a pretty good majority of the snaps for their draft position. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're hitting that like, the sub, the bell notification, the bell notification is for you to make sure you're keeping up on everything that's coming out of the channel that Ryan and I do on a weekly basis. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the film today. So like I said, originally this was about Legereus Sneed, and you're going to see him, I'm going to point it out to you so you can see him properly, here in the slot, number 38, and they played him quite a few times in the slot in most of the games that I, I, I've, I've seen him the last two times out, and he played slot, he played corner, and then he also played uh, safety a few times, and you're going to see this, this uh, hit on second down, which allows you know the Chiefs to eventually get off the field here but let's go back quickly here and kind of line this up because I would have liked to see Snead get a little bit deeper in his drop to almost avoid a run, run after the catch on a better throw for Jerry Judy here but you can see the closing angle he takes it's perfect he adjusts to the catch point he drives through the tackle and through the player and that's how you know you limit yards after the catch but that kind of a throw He's, he's done a lot of good things. His tackling has been better than I expected it to be. You know, he had a few missed tackles against KJ Hamler, who's a fast, twitchy guy, which you kind of expect, especially for a rookie. So here he is at the top slot here against Tim Patrick, a bigger receiver they put him on the slot. And just watch his footwork right here. You can see that he's got that, that hip uh, fluidity to him. He's able to step outside and come back to the inside with Tim Patrick, but you're going to also notice that he keeps that outside hand on him, right, or inside hand, just so he can gauge where he's going and then flip his hips in accordance with where he's going to be going. So he can go from this position inside or he can go outside and it won't hurt his acceleration or anything like that. So this just allows him to keep tabs on the receiver as he's going. That, that, that hip flip from outside to inside is really what allows him to stay with even quicker guys than some of the big receivers that we've seen him on. Again, you're going to see him down here on the slot. And this is, you know, Legereus needs one of the fastest guys on the team. And, and it's a lot of fun to watch him just kind of do the things that he does. But it's also even more fun to watch him understanding the defensive game plan that we're seeing. Um, the Miami Dolphins just have two receivers out to the side. So it's basically just Legereus Need and Charverius Ward on their own. And the uh, the under the understanding of when to pass off routes is one thing that it really makes a corner complete and this is a really a beautiful job of both Charvarius Ward and Legereus need understanding their roles in the defense and seeing the receivers come across their face as it's happening and you're going to watch his eyes as the receiver crosses his face here goes to the quarterback slightly he lets him pass off. He locates the underneath receiver and then looks back to the quarterback. That is exceptional, and it's great mental understanding of, one, I need to find where the receiver is that's coming across the face because I've already passed off the one that was in the slot that I was covering off to Ward, who's now behind me, locating the receiver underneath, finding the throw, and then able to break on it, which is, you know, that's really what we want to see it, at this stage from young corners. Corner is probably the most difficult position to play in the NFL, bar none. Really, when it comes down to it, you're going up against some of the best one-on-one -on -one players this, this game has ever seen. So the ability to start to understand and process things that are happening in that split-second moment, you know, I slowed it down so we can see it, but he's doing it at a much faster pace than we're getting to see. So that's, that's all you really need to see from, me, from a young guy. And he's going to continue to do that as he goes forward. There's going to be some drawbacks. That's always going to happen. Uh, this is going to end up being a pass to Mike Gesicki for a, a, for a big gain. And 
Matthew comes down to his robber role that we see him do a lot of, and he gets frustrated at the end. So I'm personally not 100% sure if Snead blew his coverage to go down to that flat receiver. But you can see that, you know, Matthew right there is close. He's throwing his hands up right now. But Snead comes in and finishes the playoff after locating where the football is. And that's, you know, that's also one thing that he's able to do very well is when he sees the football thrown, he locates it very quickly and he flies to the football and finishes through the hit. And he's able to hit a, a guy like Mike Kosicki and bring him to the ground pretty quickly. And so that's, that's one thing that I'm trying to figure out as I'm learning more about defenses, exactly the responsibilities on plays. So from what it looks like to me when I go through this play one more time, is I think that that was his responsibility to come down to that flat initially because, one, there's nobody in the flat at all. When you have the outside receiver go – outside corner go with that outside receiver, that opens this up completely. So if Snead stays with the corner uh, – excuse me, with the tight end Gasicki here, that opens up this flat route for Matt Collins, I believe, is number 86 here. Um, you have, obviously, like I pointed out, Matthew in that robber role. So he essentially is passing off Gasicki to some – to somebody here, whether it's Matthew or it's Sorensen up at the top. So I'm drawing a conclusion that this was a smart play from him to get down to the flat route. And unfortunately, there's just not enough speed to get to Gesicki in time for the completion. But this throw was actually made a little bit more difficult for Tua Tungvaloa just because he was forced to throw it a little bit earlier than I think we're seeing him do in these games. Granted, that was when you wanted to throw it, but you're going to see Tershawn Wharton right here actually just do a great job of, of getting to Tua and, and making it harder for him to then find the, you know, find the outlet. So he's going to do a good job of splitting this, D, this double right there and getting to the quarterback, throwing, you know, having Tua throw the football a little bit earlier than he wanted to. And I still think that, like I, like I just had mentioned, that that's what you want he wants to do needs to get the ball out a little bit quicker to the guys that are open. So that while it, it did make him throw it a little bit earlier, I think, and, and you can see that just the Tershawn Wharton does a great job of getting in that gap so quickly and then having them throw the football. It was a tiny bit off target, but gesicki has got the frame and the arms to, to go and get that football. So the things that these guys are able to do is, is really impressive, especially, you know, Wharton as a, a really more of a physical freak than anything playing defensive end in college now playing defensive tackle here just watch how he manhandles this offensive lineman right here he's gonna throw him to the side he just discards him like he's not even he's not even worried about what he does and then he goes and gets Melvin Gordon for a short short game this is one of those things that when you watch the play previously and you can match that speed to get through a gap with this type of strength that's going to make him not only, you know, a surefire starter going forward in the NFL, but a guy who's going to make impact plays next to Chris Jones, not just on a, a, a pass rush situation, but on rundowns. Like this is, he's a complete package and the Chiefs were able to get him as an undrafted free agent. That's, that's something that you know, comes down to them developing and seeing talent in guys that a lot of people look over because they aren't playing at big schools. Another, another guy that they, they got, they went and got was Mike Dana, a guy who went from central Michigan to being a role player at Michigan his senior year, number 51 on the end here. And when you are just in the right spot doing what you're supposed to do sometimes and oftentimes you're going to be paid off with tackles for loss or being just being in the right position and forcing either a throwaway or even just like I just mentioned, you're tackling for someone for no gain or short gain. So Chris Jones does a really great job, as he always does, of getting early pressure, not just on pass plays, but rundowns. And he's going to just throw that guy to the side and then force the running back to get outside. And that's where Mike Dan is just sitting and waiting because he's in the right position at the right time. So I want you to watch what he's able to do setting the edge. Typically, he's not going to be the biggest guy going up against tackle, but watch what he does here. He locates, and then he's going to get his arm inside. And look at his center of gravity. He's low to the ground. He's got that arm inside the tackle, and he's pushing up. So now he can see where the football is. He's locating it, and he's, nobody can get outside of him. This is an excellent frame right here because you're pushing all of your strength into this tackle 
setting the edge so that one, he's not pushing you upfield. And this running back has, no, unless he is like Tyreek Hill speed, something like that, and getting to the outside right here, he's not getting past him. And Chris Jones obviously does a great job of getting into the backfield and forcing this running back to go to his left, right into the arms of Mike Dan, who's able to disengage and wrap up for that tackle for loss. It's just being in the right spot, doing your job. And that's something that they can really rely on Mike Dana to do is be in the right spot and do his job play in and play out. So we've seen Legereus Sneed as the slot corner. And we've seen all the things that he possesses with his hips, you know, his understanding of the game a little bit more. But now we're going to see him just go on a fly route down the field and locate the football. That's what you want corners to be able to do. I just did that again. So when you watch him, this is just, like I said, it's just a go route, but you want to see he's, he locates the receiver with his, in, his inside hand, and now he's looking for the football. And you can see him run through the route better than the receiver does. He stops to locate the football. And at the end here, he's actually playing defense because Snead has done such a great job of not only locating the, fo the football, but seeing the trajectory of the football, he's going to run through the route and then go and try to make the interception and forces the receiver to play defense on that deep ball, which is ideally what you want to do. That's how you're going to get more interceptions when you're able to track the ball better than the receivers are themselves. Wharton and Dana are going to do a good job. You know, Dana almost actually gets off of that block and he was coming for Tua. So yeah, right there is what I'm talking about. He's going to make a play and forces the receiver to then play a defender. But I want you to watch Dana here real quick. So I know that this is, backup tackles and and offensive linemen for the Miami Dolphins but watch he gets gets that step outside and then he jumps back inside and he was about to throw this tackle to the ground had you know his his buddy offensive guard not come in and helped him that was I mean he's got some strength I tell you what guys Mike Dan is going to be a guy to watch going forward that should be getting more snaps at the you know on the other end opposite of Frank Clark and this is the exactly what I was talking to you guys about with with Snead right there there's the football and he's got nearly both hands on it and you can just see that real little speck of white where the receiver is having to play defense that's just an excellent job locating the football running through the route better than the receiver is almost coming up with an interception just didn't bring it down now we're going to look at some of the two sacks that Mike Dana and Tershawn Wharton had Mike Dana here is on the right end and this is the guy you're going to want to watch as his play goes forward both of you know these guys in terms of Tershawn Wharton and Mike Dana can play either either side. So he can really play on the opposite side. He can play on the left side. It doesn't matter where they put Dana. He's going to be able to do what he does and you know what he's able to do and use his strength and technique, which is something that is really an underrated part of his game. And so I'm going to watch here real quick again. The first thing that he does, you know, he tries to swipe away the hands. Get the hands off of him so he, the tackle's not getting his hands on the chest. You want to make sure you can you know, have your free, free range. And not only does Dana do a great job of trying to get his hands off of him, but the corners on the back end do allow a little bit for Dana to get home here. So this is, one, a good job of him adjusting and countering and trying to get off of this tackle to the quarterback. But it's also a good defensive job in the back end of keeping the receivers at bay. So here he's going to force that first hand off. And then he has a bit of trouble getting, getting the, the tackle's left arm off of him. He starts to swipe, and it doesn't happen. So he pushes and extends again. And this is what you really want to see from guys like Frank Clark. And when your first move doesn't work, you have to do something else to get the tackle to keep moving back into the backfield. And so here he does it again. He sets him up with that slight outside move. And then he's going to take him underneath, throw him back to the inside, the outside, and on to the, the quarterback there. So. Let's run through real quick one more time just so you guys can see it at full speed and what he's trying to do. He's just continuing to work this tackle over and over and over again. And he knows that he's got time now because Tua's not throw the ball. And now he's able to get to the quarterback, one, because of his relentless effort, as well as the multiple different moves that he uses during you know, his pass rush. That's really important because if you have a good move, for example, Frank Clark likes to use his bull rush a lot. He's a guy that likes to, to rush and rip, essentially. He wants to get on the outside and underneath. He really needs to use more outside-inside technique to force tackles to set really wide so we can go back out underneath. 
you see Dana in that bet in that last play do a good job of swiping and then bull rushing, extending and throwing and getting underneath again to the inside. That's a multiple uses of his, his techniques and his hands and his feet and his strength to get to the quarterback when the defense does a good job on the back end. Now, this is the last play we're going to talk about today. And this is just Tershawn Wharton being an absolute manipulation genius for a guy who's a rookie <laughs> he knows he's got speed and he knows that the guard knows he's got speed so he's just going to set up with, with an outside move and come right back underneath he's got such quick feet and he's got burst that i don't think many people anticipated from an undrafted free agent i know i didn't and i didn't expect him to come in and do what he's done to this part but i mean this this rookie class that they've got coming in look at that he's so quick Back underneath, that guard had no idea it was coming. And we've talked about this actually a little bit in the past uh, with Wharton and his quickness. And now not only does he, you know, obviously use it to get into gaps quickly, he's using it to set up offensive linemen in his pass rush sets. That's what you want to see. And obviously you combine that with his strength and the way that he can actually use his hands quickly and get guys off of him. He's a complete package as a pass rusher, and he's going to be able to make teams pay for – double teaming Chris Jones and double teaming guys like Frank Clark. He's going to have one-on-ones a lot and he's going to see this type of, um, he's going to see this type of coverage. So he's going to be able to get to the quarterbacks more often. And Mike Dana and Tershawn Wharton are obviously more, I guess you, you, you can say guys that don't get a lot of snaps in terms of starters. So, so Wharton comes in, on a lot, lot more pass rush downs. Granted, he's been getting more play lately in the run game, but you still have Derek Nottie and Mike Pinnell there as your two defensive stalwarts. And after this game for both Wharton and Dana, I think that we're going to see them playing a bit more on every, on an every snap basis, not necessarily playing 100% of the snaps, but more run downs, more pass rush downs, because both have flashed time and time again especially in the last two weeks, that they're capable of, of playing at a high level for this defense. So what the Chiefs have done to scout these, you know, fifth, this fifth-round pick and this undrafted free agent in Wharton have done such a great job of not only developing them, locating them, but getting them, knowing that that's the guys that they wanted. They went out and they went up in their draft to get Mike Dana. and Or no, they not went up. They just drafted him in the fifth round, excuse me, which is higher than a lot of people expected. So – Go down the coaching staff and, and the scouting department for understanding the players they want and how they can get them to execute. And you add those two with Snead, who I think is going to be a almost a true shutdown corner in the NFL with the variety of tools that he has. The defense is looking bright for the future. They've done a good job of bringing guys in and evaluating talent, finding a guy like Snead that they can get in the fourth round who's going to turn into a corner that they can start on every snap basis. So, I mean, there's really not much else you can say about this, this rookie class. They've been so great and so much better than we could have expected. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. You can see a little bit more of the rookies than we normally talk about. And that's just hope that we can continue to see this development from them going forward. They got a big game on Sunday against the saints. And I would, I would love to see these guys have a couple pressures and sacks and have maybe seen to get another interception. So again, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR football.